Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the Boulder Comedy Show Podcast. I'm your host, Brent Gill, and we have another great episode for you today. Thanks for tuning in. But before we get to it, just want to say big thanks to our presenting sponsor for this episode, Terrapin Care Station. Right there. Got a sweet little bag of dope sitting there. They probably don't like me calling it dope, but uh, <laughs> I'm going to call it a bag of bis, a bag of can of bis. Those good people have some of the best products that you can find for the price and they have five great locations two in boulder two in denver one in aurora uh and if you're listening to this out of state and you're in pennsylvania they got one there too and they're opening up more as we go so make sure you check out terrapincarestation.com thanks to them for sponsoring our show and supporting our show and thanks to all of our sponsors for supporting our show uh both the live stream and our podcast so without further ado let's get into our episode with ron lynch Thanks again for joining us here at the Digital Boulder Comedy Show studio. I am so happy to introduce to our Boulder Comedy Show fans one of my favorites, Ron Lynch. Ron, thanks Hello. for being here. Uh, it's good to be here. Um, they they have no idea that we've just been talking for half an hour already. <laughs> um, and that this is a very cold open. Um <laughs> I'm still but, trying yeah. to get the whole intro thing figured out, like because sometimes I've done it and I just kind of lead into it like this, and they're like, "Are we going?" And I'm like, "Oh yeah, no, we're like in it still." Uh, so we'll see how this actually gets edited. It might be a hilarious edit uh, at the end of this. So. I'm going to point out now that I have a stupid piece of tape here because these are bifocals. I do not have glasses that are primarily for the computer, so I have to move my glasses up a little bit to make sure everything's in focus. Oh, so so the tape is on the glasses. The nerd, the nerd thing. I'm going to be doing this occasionally. Um, yeah, yeah. I noticed and, that like when you came in, but I wasn't sure if like you if like you cut yourself like on your unibrow. It's not going to work it a... anyway. It's hot and I'm sweating, and it's not going to work, so it doesn't matter. Oh, it's I'll taped it. to your forehead. A little bit, yeah. Oh, yeah. you you got to get some gaffers tape. Damn it. I don't know what to tell you. No, that's duct tape. Good. Yeah, dude. Well, do that. Just you opened it up. You opened it up. Um, <laughs> I think effort tape on my on my glasses. Because um, then it won't leave a mark. I know I know you have a lot of questions, a lot of things you want to talk about, but we'll get there. Um, we got one time. One thing at a time. <laughs> one thing at a time. This rem- <laughs> yes. There that's fucking perfect. Yeah. <laughs> and now let's not tell anybody why it's like this. Just hope that they fast <laughs> forwarded through well, the it's crazy. I'm a freak. Why does he have glasses taped up like that? Um, <laughs> that's good. I don't want those people as my audience. Uh, also, I have to look at the camera up here probably. So hey. I, there's the camera and there's you. And then there's this is what I feel like doing. So you can do anything that feels comfortable because yeah. to be honest my eyes are cut this way uh because my camera view is this way but you're right behind my camera so people can tell that perfect. i'm not looking right at my camera either perfect and this is also an audio podcast as well sure it's mostly dominated by video but it's audio too and for those of you listening at home they don't know the gag that we're talking about right so well that's been great brent uh thank <laughs> Thanks for having appreciate um, having you on man the it's shortest, been... shortest show i've ever been on which is great <laughs> uh, we made our point uh, <laughs> uh do uh, i have to i should say hello boulder hello boulder there we there. go <laughs> that took uh four minutes to get uh, <laughs> uh, uh through our intro uh well, Ron, thanks for being here, man. We've had you uh, several times at the show over the past seven years that we've been there. And um, I love it. it's always nice having you on there. Uh, and it's, it, I mean, to me, what you do right now, it's so cool just like what your career is right now. You do a ton of really cool TV shows, a lot of fun cartoons. Uh, and, you know, you've got uh, the voice of a fucking god. Uh, and. Thank you very much. <laughs> and it's just it, it's been cool knowing you uh for the past few years and so it uh, you know of course we're all interested in you know how 
uh, and when and where did you get started in comedy? <laughs> <laughs> That's it. It's one question. Just uh, one three part yeah. comma, uh, comma, comma. It's a very long story. Look how old I am. Uh, um, <laughs> yeah. Uh, it was, uh, it really started in college when I did a radio show with a guy from, I went to high school with, and we couldn't get a show unless we did one together. So we did a show together, wound up doing sketches and enjoyed comedy. And we said, let's do some of this stuff in one of the dorms. And I can't believe it, but the first show we did was over two hours long. And, wow. um, and the audience stayed because there was nothing else to do. Sure. Uh, and then we both moved to Boston and we were there at the, like, the beginning of the scene there. So, so, so was this, okay. So when you're doing the show, what college are you at? Like, like, where are you at in college? The SUNY Binghamton, State University of New York at Binghamton, New York. Okay, cool. My uh, cousin's got dental practices up there. It's a pretty good uh, college. Yeah, I don't it know is. About, I have no opinion of it really. <laughs> um, but uh, we lived in Johnson city in a house that we rented for $200, five wow. people. Wow. Yeah, five bedrooms. Two hundred um, bucks. That's awesome. So, that has so nothing you. To do with, that's, sorry, say that again. Say, that has nothing to do with my comedy career, but I doubt it. <laughs> I still want to hear about it. So you, yeah. so so you, uh, you knew this guy in high school, and y'all were doing uh, sketches and stuff like that, and like improv. Is that what you were kind of doing? Yeah, we had a crazy uh, show that was um, part. Uh, music stuff and talking over that and then we did a talk show for a while uh and the show went as long as we wanted because we locked the station up when we were done so we would be there until two in the morning sometimes and we did a talk show we would bring people we would talk to people calling us up uh and we were like the number two station in town number two show not show but we were big the show was kind of got kind of big um wow and, uh, it was super fun it was super fun having no restrictions like there's no commercials it was college radio that's so awesome we could do whatever we wanted so so uh, so, so was it kind of like radio theater almost like a little bit of it like did you do radio yeah, sketches and of, then yeah we had we would have people come over friends from the theater department and uh do sketches with us um on the air and then we did like this little serial that was really fun um it was crazy uh pretty fun and uh, we said, you know what, we're going to do, we're going to start doing comedy. How, how, how often were you, well, how long were you doing the, the radio show, show for all of college? Uh, I'm going to say two years. Okay. Yeah, second two years, you know, uh, junior and senior year. Okay. And, and, uh, and then how did you, uh, like, how often were you doing it? Like once a week, uh, a couple nights a week? Once a week. Yeah. Once a week. Um, I don't know when we started the show. I think it was like nine, nine to whenever. And you just had as much time as you wanted. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And then one of us would work as a night guard sometimes. So they would have to leave the show at like 1130. And then the other one would just keep doing it. Um, yeah, it was pretty fun. And uh, my partner, Bob, uh, wound up his airline that he worked for went to Boston. We were going to move to New York and we said, you know, let's go to Boston for a year, figure out what we're doing and then move to New York. And we wind up staying in Boston for nine years. Oh, wow. Uh, and doing comedy there. Um, and, uh, and yeah. this is when you started doing straight stand up comedy, uh, at yeah, that point like at, a, at stand up at a show. Yeah. We were, I was in a comedy team with him. Cool. For like, uh, the beginning in eight years or so. Yeah. There was a few comedy teams. Um, and, um, you know, it was easier because you could rely on the other guy at times when you weren't that funny. Um, <laughs> yeah. But, yeah, it was great. He was on he was on the first Comedy Connection show, which was one of the clubs there for a while. And then I moved there uh, many months later. Gotcha. I stayed, at, I stayed in graduate school for another two years. Yeah. Um, had you had any no. desire to get into like radio theater or stand up comedy? How, like, had you watched uh, uh, c comedians in your come up, or like, like, did this just like, you know what? I want to just, I just want to be on the. Or did you just have a random feeling you wanted to be on the air, and that was that? Yeah, no, I can't say. You know, I watched stand ups and went, oh, I got to do that because there weren't that many to watch 
at the time. You know? Yeah. Uh, it was the, cl- the classics, you know, the, the main old guy. Comedy, sure, Ed sure. Live and go and whatever, and all those shows. Yeah. Go back that far, really. But, um, yeah, I, we just decided to um, try it out because we did theater and stuff. And um, I wound up getting a geology degree, but I wound up staying with the theater thing for another two years. Interesting. And, um, geology, huh? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I can tell you what some rocks are, and that's about it. Uh, <laughs> did you have a desire to do anything? Like, like, did you just want a practical degree in something? Or did you, like, were you genuinely interested in rocks? I loved uh, science and um Geology generally didn't kill anything in the lab, so um, I think I stuck with that. And I really enjoyed rocks. And I was president of the uh, Beth Page uh, Mineralogical and Speleological Society. Um, okay. This is on Long Island, which there are no no caves on Long Island. <laughs> um, speleological is no caves, and um, so yeah, I just enjoyed science and kept going with that. I thought that's what I really should be doing. But then um, I did some theater in high school, too, and that kind of brought it on, you know. Yeah. We just found we were good at it, I think. It's one of those things, you know. Yeah. Jackie found out she was a good at, she was funnier than the comic by heckling. So, <laughs> right. Um, you know, people say once you get that first audience laughing at you, you're stuck. Right, right. Uh, Th- that's, that's exactly what I say. Like, if you, like, for me... And from what I've found so far, if you smashed your first time, there's only been one comic on that ate shit their first time and kept doing it and is successful. Uh, but, like that, that I've interviewed so far. But for, for me, like that first time was like, oh, my God, this is the best. This is the best thing in the world. Yeah. And, and of course, when we were doing radio, we didn't know if people were laughing at it or not. I mean, yeah. People would call up and say things, but you wouldn't hear the laughs at all. You know, it's yeah. like this. Yeah. Like this. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, it's great. So, so uh, you were doing like a couple hours at a time, and, and it was like, were you? Did you listen to, uh, you know, did you listen to radio theater? Because I know that there was, I believe it was, was it? Oh yeah, no, I loved, yeah, I loved the uh, radio theater shows, the, the old ones, and there yeah. were a few new ones, like War of the Worlds and stuff like that. Is the is the classic one oh, I know yeah. of? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, anything from the forties, fifties. You know, there was an old. Uh, God, well, what was it? Well, Twilight Zone was redone again, and it, those were pretty great, too. Yeah. I'm trying to think of modern radio shows that stuck for a while. Um, Inverness. The word, the word Inverness, the clock, it's in my head somewhere about a tower, the Tower of Inverness, I think okay. was the name of the serial when I was in college uh, that was way out there. And, gotcha. And uh, pretty fun. Uh, I don't think that led to that led to us doing like a serial about it, you know, about comedy or some. I don't even remember what our show was about, the serial that we did. Um, but yeah, we were in in Boston uh, at the beginning of the Ding Ho, which is that big. Uh, it's a pretty infamous uh, Chinese restaurant uh-huh. with uh, cowboy uh, decor okay. um, <laughs> that they never changed. <laughs> okay, uh, I was. It was taken over by Barry doing um, comedy there. And it was like the biggest variety of comics there. And it was so much fun. And there was nobody judging us except another guy who, who did comedy. Yeah. Uh, and it was really fun. And he raised the price of comedy in Boston because he would split the door with everybody. Whereas as the other club was paying us like 10 bucks. Right. You know? So we were in a comedy team. There's two of us. All right, 15, you know, and that was a big deal. You know, it's crazy because I feel like numbers really haven't changed that much. Uh, no. for... <laughs> the, improv, the improv pays crap. So, uh, but you got to do the improv. Yep. You got to do it. Yep. That's right. You won't be doing it now, but. <laughs> <laughs> improv. But you're but. still just as broke. Um, interesting. So that's. Okay, so you started to, now. How old are you? Uh, like, what ages are you when you're in Boston? Well, right after college. Uh, so, like, twenty two to so like thirty. Twenty two to thirty, yeah. Yeah, okay. Twenty two to thirty, pretty much. Gotcha. Uh, and then uh, we flipped a coin, and um, he got married, and I kept doing comedy, and uh, <laughs> he stayed in the in the Boston area. 
He has two great kids, um, and I love him. And he's really he's super funny. He's still funny. We just performed together for the first time in eons on a Ding Ho reunion thing that was on Zoom. Oh, cool! Uh, and it was great to see all these guys that we did comedy with, you know. And Steve Wright was at the club. Lenny Clark, uh, wow. Paula Poundstone. Uh, yeah, super fun. Super Ding Ho, D I N G H O. Yes. Ding Ho. Yes. I'm, I'm gonna look that up. That's awesome. It was a point where it became so popular that I had to start doing comedy in the back room, which was a restaurant, which was the restaurant part. Um, and you'd be performing on stage and uh, you'd be like doing one of your last bits and you would look to your right and you would see a guy going like this, like going insane. And you would get off stage and you could hear your introduction going on in the back room as you would walk on the other stage oh, and wow. continue and do another act. Oh, uh, wow. Yeah. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> wow is this place still 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 doing shows like no, not no, right no. now obviously but okay oh, no. so so it's no. it's been closed uh, down the Mexican restaurant now yeah uh, does bob still do anything uh related to show business or radio or not really no he um deals with uh, a computer network that he kind of came up with with another guy to tie all the um senior living places together so they can communicate um, That's smart. But he's great. At, he's great. He has a great personality. So he's great at putting that together and talking to people. And uh, uh, yeah, I wish I would say you should start making them do improv. You know, uh, get the get them together. Uh, get some content for this Instagram. He enjoys what he does, and uh, <laughs> still really funny. Yeah. And we wrote, we wrote like a bit for this Ding Ho thing because we said, well, we got to come up with something new. Wrote a bit, and we had wind up. It was like four minutes long. They were only giving us five minutes and then we pared it down to like a minute so that we were able to tell a story. Um, and then they would tell it, show a video of an old video of you performing. Uh, <laughs> so it was, it was fun and uh, it took four hours and I think 20 something minutes wow. to show everybody at the club and do all that. But everybody wow. stayed with it. The audience stayed with it. Um, that's what a awesome. great show it was. Yeah. Is that clip still available anywhere of you back in the day? No, they made sure it wasn't, I guess, because it was a big it was a big uh, charity for uh, Barry Crimmins' wife. Okay. Uh, who was also suffering um, an ailment. And yeah. they were putting the money to her because uh, Barry didn't leave a lot of money. So, uh, yeah. Did you ever see the movie that Goldthwait made about uh, Barry Crimmins? I don't think I did. Pretty good. It's pretty yeah. great. Yeah. What's it called? Look at it. Uh, what's it called? That's a very good question. Um, I'll write it down. <laughs> Bobcat. I can look it up. Yeah. Movie on Barry. Um. So he got married while y'all were in Boston, and that and and that kind of put uh, a, a period to your to your adventures together. Right. As a comedy team, yeah. Yeah, and then, it so then... too, but... Yeah. Did you then, at that point, decide, all right, let's go try something new, or did something pull you away from Boston? I tried to leave Boston for probably three years. Okay. Um, first, I wound up... This club kind of throw, got thrown in my lap. Um, a big room that I, uh, I booked some people in there, and we never really made money. And then after about six months, uh, I found out that he was using me as a front to sell tickets to the show. And then people would go upstairs and drink illegally. Um, <laughs> wow. And he got, arrested. he got arrested for tax invasion. So um, that was one reason I stayed, which was great. Um, uh, and uh, I don't <laughs> remember what one of them was. And I had another show, I think a midnight show in a small little club that was great. Um, and then the third, the third time I got stuck was Dennis Leary asked me to teach at Emerson after him. So I taught at Emerson for a year, um, which was a great experience. And, yeah. um, you know, it was really fun, but it was still, you know, it's people that are right out of high school. And I'm, I'm thinking I'm going to be very intelligent, whatever. But it, I didn't I, I wanted to bring it down a little bit teaching. And I had a great I had a great time teaching. And cool. um, 
after about a year, they said, uh, well, we're going to give you your own uh, comedy department, and blah, blah, blah. And I think I actually said at that moment, no, I can't. I'm trying to leave town. <laughs> um, For the love I, of God, stop keeping me here. I would still be there. I would still be there teaching. Yeah. Um, I think I wanted to leave town and perform somewhere else for one thing. Yeah. Because what in Boston, I was still, I still had the, uh, uh, the thing that I was in a comedy team, you know? Yeah. Um, and then I went to New York for a year, which was experience. And, um, <laughs> went it to, uh, it doesn't when, sound like it was the most positive of experiences. Uh, yeah, no, I had, I wound up when I looked at my calendar after that year in New York, Six months to the day I left town to work out of town to pay for the apartment that I had. Wow. Uh, you couldn't make any money, really, unless you were like three people. Wow. And that were in New York. I would drive cabs around. Uh, but uh, it was fun. New York was great. I got to meet a lot of people that, you know, today is, are now famous. You know, I remember see Adam Sandler was just starting out. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, then I went to San Francisco. For oh, a while. San Francisco was a great comedy town. It was great, super fun. I mean, uh, very creative, great town. I uh, can see San Francisco speaks to, uh, from, from what I've heard about your start so far, I could see that San Francisco would speak to that better than New York would. Uh, you know, in terms of collaboration in terms of you know th more of a radio theater more of a you know like just being able to be a little more um not so i don't want to say not so strict uh but like stand up in new york has to be i feel like they want it to be done a certain way and it's either that way or leave and i don't know if that's the case yeah. back then um yeah, but to an extent i mean to an extent there wasn't any really uh, crazy stuff going on. Um, I started, you know, I started with regular spots, but then as you keep performing and you're not bringing crowds in, you're yeah. getting later, later spots. And I would be performing for the wait staff sometimes, you know. Yep. Uh, but it was pretty fun. Yeah. Uh, but San Francisco, I, you loved. San Francisco, great. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, we wind up, we had, uh, I taught, I, I used to teach in Boston too. I taught stand up, which is crazy. Um, and then when I left Boston, I decided not to teach anymore, but I taught a little bit um, in San Francisco. And okay. uh, Margaret Schroeder took my class, which is so funny because anytime I work with her, she will point that out, which is one of those things that you would think somebody wouldn't want to point that out. <laughs> right. But um, she's great. She's great. Um, but we had a sketch group. We had a sketch group in. Um, in San Francisco with uh, with Margaret and uh, who else would you know? Jim Earl. Earl. Okay. Um, wow. Yeah. It was pretty fun. Yeah. Fun Crazy. Yeah. That's cool. And then so, so how, so it, do you prefer sketch comedy to, for yourself to stand to straight stand up? Like group um, sketch versus solo stand up I like with other people for sure. Yeah. Uh, but, uh, I like everything I have to say, you know, when I think about it, you know, I, it's the variety that makes it interesting to me, you know, um, I wouldn't want to be one kind of stand up and do that. Right. Um, plus I probably, I wouldn't be good at it. Um, um, I went from doing stand up and jokey jokes and now I don't, do that very much anymore yeah um because i either got tired of it um then again i've been i'm doing bits that i've been doing for 10 years so um why don't i, I should be tired of those <laughs> <laughs> uh, so, uh, so how long were you in san francisco for uh another like eight years like eight years okay and then um uh, I kept driving down the five from San Francisco to come down here to either show some sketch shows that we did or uh, do some of the clubs or whatever. And then after a while, the work was here and it wasn't worth staying in San Francisco. And I didn't right. like driving back and forth on that five, the most boring yeah. highway in the world and smelly at some points. I mean, and, uh, yeah, it, 
it ranks up there with I-80 and going through Nebraska <laughs> for sure. Yeah. 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 <laughs> um, so I moved here. Yeah. And everybody was moving out of San Francisco. Two clubs have closed. And- yeah. So San Francisco yeah. is now, have you, when you're in San Francisco, have you done any TV spots or yet at that point? Like, what was your first, like, role in your mind where you're like, yo, this is, I, I can't, this is cool. This is my first big thing on TV. Well, I was around in the, uh, uh, I wouldn't say it was the late 80s, it was more like the early 90s, where there were just so many uh, stand-up shows on TV. Yeah. You know? and I I did, I think, four of those. Okay, gotcha. Um, and um, quite often, would convince that I should do something really weird and then it wound up just being stupid uh, in a way um like i did uh, the carolines uh evening at carolines the carolines what the hell was it? Um, yeah carolines in, in a um a Times square and i said look, look i'm gonna do a dinosaur bit about jurassic park and i'm gonna run through the audience as a dinosaur and to me kind of funny and um, <laughs> i think it was good up to a point uh but when you get to see the shots and people in the audience are looking at you like, what the are you doing? You know, um, and I what love am I the saying? Commitment. I enjoy that. I enjoy that actually. But, um, uh, you know, most of those shows were straightforward stand up shows. Yeah. Uh, not a lot of craziness, which I didn't appreciate. But uh, <laughs> John Biner did a show called Comedy on the Road. He hosted that show and that show was fun. I love that guy. And, um, that show was a little crazy and they put like a weird backdrop behind me. It was pretty fun. Uh, but yeah, that, those shows were like the big, the big breaks. Yeah. Uh, the first show I did was called two drink minimum. Okay. Um, and at that point, this will date it. I was still, I was wearing a purple suit. Hell yeah. Purple, yeah. And I think I opened up with a Barney joke. So, you know, yes. that will make everybody lose respect for me. Uh, and the audience, the audience was a uh, paid for type audience where yep. you knew they never saw comedy before <laughs> or they never they, they <laughs> had no desire to be there. Let's do this. It's a comedy thing. It'll be fun. And, you know, they're not they don't know how to laugh. Oh, God. Yeah, that sounds awful. Uh- <laughs> <laughs> well, it was. It was. <laughs> And then when did you start getting character work where you're playing, uh, because, you know, cause you always play great characters, um, on, on shows like Portlandia, uh, home movies, uh, you know, stuff like that. Bob's burgers. You're in there. What was your first well, one? Funny. I don't know. Um, I know home movies was the first like big thing for me. Cause okay. So I did a lot. Um, and it was a paycheck, so it was great. Yeah. Um, and that was when you were uh, living here in LA, or was that when you were up in San Fran still? It started in. Wow, that's a good question. I think it started in Boston, but maybe not. No, it didn't. I did it visiting Boston. Um, so um, Dr. Katz is what started it with. Okay. With Boston, because it's the same company. Home Movies was the same company, and the producer, the sound guy for those shows is the producer for Bob's Burgers. So it's the same family in a way, you know. Gotcha. Really a lot of and, and that's why Bob's Burgers allows a little bit of uh, improvising with the script. And um, and he loves that. So he'll let people go off a little bit. And you know what? Something better. You will have something better than the, the actual script maybe sometimes. Yeah. Um, but that doesn't answer your question. I really got off on but that. But that was pretty interesting, uh, though, about the, the um, that they let you improvise, on, you know, on the script like that, especially, like, that seems like such a more movies, fun. We would do the script, and then home movies, we were we would ad-lib the whole thing um, based on the script, and they would, you know, juggle things around. And it, they called, they actually um, uh, trademarked it uh, retro scripting, and um, they would redo the whole script uh, a home movie sometimes based off of what the y'all riffed. It was kind of a network show. It was UPN when it started. Yeah. So they had to give them a product right away. That was the way it was. So they would just claim that was the script <laughs> <laughs> that nobody was at living. 
<laughs> now, uh, so you got these when you were living in Boston is when you got these. That's yes. Well, I was living in Boston and then I went up from New York to do more Dr. Katz. Uh, and then I would visit San Francisco and that's when I met Brendan and Brendan sold them the home movies idea. Um, so I wasn't living in Boston for home movies at all. I always came into town to do that. Interesting. Um, cool. And we do more than one at a time. Yeah, of course, of course. That's but Yeah, that's kind of what made me believe I should keep doing in a way, you know. Yeah. Uh, well, that yeah. also tickles with what I mean, what you did to start with. Like that's, you know, the the radio room type of like I assume the feeling of that is kind of similar to uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Voice there's no, nobody can see you when you're doing voices and uh, you're playing a couple of characters in the thing and no one can see you. So you just have to convince them you're somebody else. Yeah. Uh, which isn't too hard because college kids are pretty stupid. Uh, <laughs> Was home movies, did y'all, were, were, were all of you in the same, <laughs> speaking of stupid, were all of you in the same room at the same time doing it, I assume? Yeah, home movies, yes. Uh, Bob's Burgers, yes. Um, and I did Adventure Time, and that was everybody in the same room. Um, and that just got picked up on HBO Max as a nice. new, new view of Adventure Time. And it's insane. The, the show on HBO Max is totally insane. And I went in and did a couple of those. But I actually parked in the parking lot. It's a COVID story. Um, they gave me all the instructions on how the th how I should act and everything else and park in the parking lot behind the place. Um, and then when it gets to be four o'clock, go in the double doors to the right um, and then walk directly into the studio. So I work like I get up and I walk in and there's doors that are open and, then, and the, mat the uh, engineer goes, hey, close those doors behind you. Uh, OK, close all the doors. And nobody was in the studio. And I was being directed on a video screen that was inside the sound booth. <laughs> what? And, uh, yeah, that couldn't have been moral. <laughs> uh, so. I bet that but was awkward. It's, yeah. It's a crazy show. It's a crazy show. If anybody has HBO Max, The New Adventure Time. Yeah. It's pretty great. Do you prefer the uh, all in one room or uh, just by yourself or yeah. does it really matter? All in one room is, is great. Yeah, it's great because you 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 know you see the person the person and um, it's like more fun that way and people goof around a little bit and adds and it adds a, bit, a good energy to it you know yeah um, so yeah yes it should be in the same room That's so Bob's Burgers is is New York L A so there's like four people in New York and five people in L A and that happens. Gotcha. Are, are now 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 when that's going on, are they doing it digitally with like a with like a Zoom screen so the people in New York can see the people in LA, or is it like New York you people schedule their time and they're just in your headphones? Oh, okay, gotcha. Okay, gotcha. Uh, that's great. Cool. Yeah. Sweet. And then so so you've been doing. Dr. Katz was the first big one, and then it kind of went up from there. And, and how did you get looped in with Portlandia and, and, and that team up there? Uh, well, Fred and I uh, became friends in a very weird way, and I'll try to make this a short story. But, okay. Um, I was doing a lot of – when I moved down to L.A., I was at Largo, the small Largo, the beginning one. Uh, which was great for me. They treated me great, and that's all it took for you to create new things. And I, I, I came up with like three of my things I do now in at Largo in that oh, wow. small little club in the corner. It was like a, it was like red candle lights. You know, it was dark, um, pretty fun. And um, so I get a phone call, uh, and it's a, a voicemail, and the person on the voicemail goes. Um, Hi, um, I saw you at Largo, and I'm a big fan, and I think you're very funny, and um, I also do comedy. And um, I'm thinking it would be great if you um, and I both did something together on the stage. So please give me a call. I just had you should talk to me. And um, 
<laughs> so I'm leaving your phone number and, uh, you know, and I'm thinking, and I asked a couple of people, I said, what is up with this guy? What do you think I should do? They said, I don't know. I wouldn't, I wouldn't call him. I, I don't know if I, I would have call called him. him. Really? You would have? <laughs> I wouldn't. I didn't call him. I, didn't, I wound up, I didn't call him. No, I would um, not have called him. Oh, I you would, would not, not have. have. No, yeah, no, yeah, no, yeah. absolutely not. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, so anyway, perfectly done. So you know the end of the story now. So a week later, I'm doing a, uh, I'm hosting um, a show in West Hollywood at a cafe in the back and some great people on the show and um, Fred's on the show. And uh, I don't know what he was doing at the time. I don't think he was doing any much. And uh, so I said, uh, okay, what do you want me to say about you? And he said, Ron, you know me. And I went, um, I, don't, I don't really know you. He says, yeah, I called you. I said, you called me. And it, just the way he said it, I knew it was him <laughs> that left that message and immediately became friends with him because I just thought that was the best thing ever. <laughs> it was the best thing ever. Totally fooled me. Totally fooled me. Um, kind of freaked me out, too. And, um, How did this guy get my phone number? Oh, God. It was pretty great. That's so, funny. Um, yeah, so Fred got me that gig. Yeah. Uh, and um, I was flying out of Denver at one point, and I was supposed to do an episode of Portlandia. And um, they called me in the car while I was on the way to the airport to fly to Portland um, and said, we, we wound up casting somebody else. Oh, we'll send you back to L.A. Uh, or you can play this guy's brother. And it was a it was the thing about the goth characters on the beach. Yeah, yeah, and yeah. It was, um, um, oh, what was the band the guy was in? What's the band um, that the Portlandia the, characters in? Yeah, he's on the beach, but he's wearing like beachwear. And it's like he's like a he's like a really dark band in a dark band. Dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So they cast him. I did, I felt really good about. It. I went, yeah, it should be him. Um, <laughs> And they said, well, you can play his brother in this episode or we can get you in something else. And luckily I said, well, let's do something. Else. Okay. While we got in the car at the airport, they changed my flight back to LA. And then I did the episode I did, which was fun. I really, you know, um, um, I liked what I did. I liked, I liked that show. Yeah. Uh, and it was super fun. Yeah. If you had to choose live acting um, or anime or like, uh -huh. like voiceover, what would your favorite like go to be? Well, his voiceover is the best job ever. Are you kidding me? I would think so, right? Yeah. I think that's amazing. Uh, but live, uh, yeah, live is the best because you know you judge for what's happening right there. Uh, that's not the best thing about it, but um, when it goes well, it's great. Yeah, uh, it goes horrible like a corporate gig or something, then, uh, you know, you're getting paid and who cares? But I, that's not talking like I do corporate gigs. I don't do, I don't do corporate gigs. Uh, yeah. uh, oh man. Well, Ron, that is a, that is a fascinating story, man. I, um, it, it, it definitely, as per usual, it, this definitely ma makes sense. Uh, how you got into the groove that you got into, y you know, starting with, with radio theater, that is a, um, I mean, God, I bet that was fucking fun. Just doing whatever you wanted as an open-minded college student. That'd be, that'd yeah, be pretty cool. Yeah, play music and do everything. And, yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, and then moving in, and, and then now you uh, now you run still uh, the, uh, God, the, probably the longest show in L.A., the uh, Tomorrow Show. Uh, you know, 16th year. Okay. Uh, our show. We're on Instagram right now, at Ron Lynch one Cool. Um and it's every Saturday at 11. Uh, we moved it up from 12 because people can't handle that. <laughs> um, but uh, we're going to we're gonna move the show to a bigger format. But yeah, check in with us. We got uh, David Arquette on the show. Cool. Uh, this Saturday. And he's great. Uh, super fun. Awesome. Um, and um, I'm on corporate this season, this season. Nice. Season three, the final season. It's the final season. And the last show itself is the most insane television show you'll ever see. And it's super great. 
I can't. Wait. I can't wait. Yeah. Hell yeah. Right on. Well, Ron Lynch, it was fantastic learning about you and, and chatting with you today. Um, nice Instagram at Ron Lynch one is a good, a good way to follow you. Anything else you want to plug before we let you go? I think I squeezed those in while you were talking. So Perfect. <laughs> uh, yeah, that's about it. Right on. Well, thank you very much for, for joining us. Boulder, be sure to, to catch us live when we, uh, when we are back in the Bohemian Beer Garden. Uh, when, when we get Ron Lynch back, until then, make sure you follow him on Instagram. And follow us and listen for more podcasts coming out every Wednesday. Thank right you here. out there. Of course, on Boulder Comedy Show. BoulderComedyShow.com. We'll see you guys later. Thanks, Ron Lynch. Hi, Brent. Thanks so much. Thank <laughs> you.